Welcome to Present Truth Broadcast with Pastor Maxwell Ogaga. Brought to you by Present Truth Ministry, a teaching ministry where believers are trained to be established in the truth of God's Word. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we were able to establish on Sunday that uh, Paul writing, that is God speaking to us through the ministry of Paul, says that he doesn't want us to be ignorant. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. Now, if he says, I do not want you to be ignorant, it shows that it is possible to be ignorant. But he says, I don't want you to be in that state. And like I said, how many times have we heard sermons being taught on the gifts of the Spirit? Now, he goes on to say, you know that you were Gentiles, carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Observe the word led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Verse 4, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. So I, I, I said I want you to observe the word spirit there. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. I want you to observe the word Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who walks all in all. It is the same God who walks all in all. I like to read that verse from the Amplified Version. That is verse Four now. Now, uh, uh, if you read the Amplified Version in verse 3, it says, Therefore, I want you to know that no one's speaking by the power and the influence of the Spirit. I want you to know those two words, power and influence. The power and influence of the Spirit can say, Jesus, be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is my Lord, except by the power and the influence of the Holy Spirit. That's the Amplified. Now there are distinctive varieties of spiritual gifts, special abilities given by the grace and extraordinary power of the Holy Spirit operating in the believer. That's what I like about the, 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 the Amplified Version, verse 4. It says, special abilities given by the grace and extraordinary power of the Holy Spirit operating what? In the believer. Verse 5, and there are distinctive varieties of ministries and service, but it is the same Lord. Verse 6, and there are distinctive ways of working to accomplish things, but it is the same God. Now, now this is, this is what I want you to pick from the, the, the Amplified. It is the same God who produces all things in all believers. So I want you to observe the word all believers, if you use the Amplified Version. Inspiring, energizing, and empowering them. So I want you to, to note those two words. Inspiring, empowering, and energizing. Inspiring, empowering, and energizing. Praise God. I said praise God. All right, let's get back to the New King James Version. Okay. So the, it goes on to say... Uh, and there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. Now, we're going to build around verse 7 today. It says, but the manifestation. Okay? Of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit. Like I said before, the, the word, the profit of all is in italics. So, three words I want you to note there, three Greek words I want you to note there, which are the three key words that makes us to understand that, that um, particular verse 7 is the word manifestation. The manifestation of the Spirit, or the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So, we have manifestation, we have each one or every man, and then we have profit. Okay, so we have manifestation, which is the Greek word phanerosis. It means to express. It means to express. So we have the manifestation of the spirit is given to how many people? To how many people? To each one. So we have manifestation, which is very important. 
Then we have each one. Then we have prophets. Now, these are the three key words in verse 7. The word manifestation means expression. Now, it is possible to have the Holy Spirit within you, but there is no expression given to it. Praise God. It's possible that the Holy Ghost is in you, but if you don't know, there will be not that expression. So, the first word there is phanerosis. It means expression. The manifestation for something to be manifested, to come out in the open, is given to each one. Hekastos, that's the Greek word. Each one, every believer, everyone. Now, it is very important because that's the foundation of tonight's teaching to understand that every believer has the, the gifts of the Spirit in them. That this is not just for pastors. And then the last word is that it is given for what? For our profit. So for all, which is advantage. Advantage. That means the gift of the Holy Spirit, the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit are, are for our advantage. It is for our profiting. That means when the Holy Spirit, these gifts are in you, it is to your advantage. So if you don't use them, if you don't put them to work, then there is no profit in them. It is not just for us to build a great church. These gifts will save your family, will save you from death, will save your children. Praise God. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the gift of faith, the working of miracles, we get the sick healed. So it's very important for us to understand that the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. I, I, I want you to observe that word, each one. It is not just given to your pastor. It is not just given to the pastor you respect. It is not just given to your favorite Bible teacher. The manifestation of the Holy Ghost is given for your profiting. The gifts of the Spirit are resident in you for your profiting, for your advantage. Praise God. I said praise God. So we must have that mindset, first of all, that when we start teaching explicitly on this gift, we are talking about things that are in you already. Not things you're going to have. There are things that are in you. And that's, that's, that's something I want us to build on. Let's go to... Uh, Something in, in Acts chapter 19, something that happened in Acts 19, and then we'll come back here. Because I believe that it is possible for the Holy Spirit to be in a believer and is not given expression. So sometimes people feel, oh, well, why do we talk about people getting filled in the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues and praying in the Holy Ghost and all that? I already have the Holy Ghost in me. Yes, it's possible to have the Holy Ghost in you, but it is not, it is not manifested. It's not giving expression. You see, you can only give expression to what you have already. Am I right? So if the Holy Spirit is not in you, of course, there's nothing to give expression to. Now, one of the things I want to help you to understand this evening is that those gifts are already on your inside. You don't, even, you don't even need to try to receive them again. They are already there. But the key is learning how to give manifestation or expression to it. Now, Acts chapter 19, let's read from verse 1, and we're going to stop at verse 6. Acts chapter 19, from verse 1 to 6. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth, that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, observe that, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. <laughs> Verse 3, and he said, into then were you baptized? So they said, into John's baptism. What was John's baptism? John's baptism was the baptism of repentance. Praise God. Calling them to repentance. Now, look at what he said, verse 4. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is Jesus on Christ. That is Christ, on Christ Jesus, sorry. Verse 5. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So, Paul came, and, uh, sorry, uh, John the came and taught them, you know, the message of John the Baptist, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent for your sins and all that. And so, they heard that message, and then they were baptized. 
Now, this tells us also very importantly that a believer is restricted by the teachings he has access to. That you cannot believe what you have not heard. And so, if you are a child of God, it's important. You see, I, 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 I want to explain this, and I, I, I may be careful when I say this, but I want to explain this. You can't listen to everybody because I, I have, I, I, sometimes I talk to believers and they try to make it sense, sound like humility, you know. We can listen to everybody. Even a fool has a lesson to teach. You can also learn from a madman. Anybody can teach me something. I, I have a problem if you can learn from anybody. There are wise people to learn from, so why learn from a fool? You can make a decision. Like, listen, I'm going to be careful about what I learned because sometimes when you have so many information, you are literally confused, right? As by, so what is the truth? So sometimes in the name of unity, we allow people just to preach and everybody's saying they the same, saying whatever they feel the Bible is saying. And you are limited by who you listen to. You are limited by the revelation of a man you listen to. So here we find that these disciples, they were disciples of Christ, but they were limited. This broadcast is made possible by friends and partners of Present Truth. To become a partner, please call plus 234-805-888-7575. God bless you. Praise God. Now, I was, I was watching, I was listening to a man uh, a couple of years ago. I've stopped listening to him. I was listening to him, very strong in the miraculous, very strong. And one day, a miracle happened in his ministry, and he said something. He said, this is miracles. This is not humanities. This is not about correct Bible interpretation. This is raw power. You know, and everybody was shouting. But that statement just turned me off. Like, I can't understand why you would say, well, this is power. This is not about correct Bible interpretation. It shows me where your value system is. It shows me where your value system is. And I have a problem if you do not respect what the Bible says. Because a day will come where you will be confronted with the truth of the Bible and you will not want to accept because you feel it's all about the miracles. That is foundational. Praise God. Praise God. Because I've sat sometimes with ministers and with pastors or with brethren, and I've opened the scripture and I say, this is what the word of God says. And they, I mean, it's almost like they're arguing. No, no, I know, but no, listen, the word of God is our final authority. Praise God. It doesn't, we don't test truth by results. We test truth by truth. Praise God. Sometimes some truths will not bring results. They just make you know that they will not bring results. Praise God. You just know them. Praise God. Okay, let's go. On. So, let's see what happened to, to them here. Verse 4. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. Verse 5. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them. And they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now the men were about 12 in all. So these were 12 men who have heard the baptism of John. They were disciples. They were born again. The Holy Ghost was upon them already. But Paul laid hands on them and the Bible says they spoke in tongues and they prophesied. Now, this is where I'm going. Immediately Paul laid hands on them. Actually, what happened here was Paul activated the Holy Ghost that was already in them and what happened, they experienced a manifestation of two of the gifts. What was the, the gift they experienced? Tongues and what? And prophecy. They didn't have to go through a class like this. What happened there was that by Paul teaching them or by, Paul, by them having an encounter with Paul, Paul helped them to yield to the Holy Ghost. Praise God. That's why even if you're a believer, for instance, and we have Holy Ghost meetings, we can lay hands on you and the Holy Ghost will fill you more. It doesn't mean that you did not have the Holy Ghost. It just means that you were filled the more. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay. Let's see how this works out in the life of Jesus. Go with me to John chapter 20. John chapter 20. And verse 22. John 20, 22. This was talking about Jesus and the disciples. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. So Jesus breathed on the disciples 
and told them, receive the Holy Spirit. Go to Luke 24, 49. Luke 24, 49. Jesus now said to them in Luke 24, 49, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. But he had already told them that they would receive the Holy Ghost when he breathed on them. Now go to Acts chapter 1 verse 4. Acts chapter 1 verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. Verse 5, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 and verse 2 to 4. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were seated. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and, and one sat upon each of them. Look at what happened in verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, the question is, in John chapter 20, what happened? They received the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was already in them. The gifts was already in them. But this fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost was more like an activation. Was more, was more like getting them baptized so that they can begin to do what? To express and to manifest the gift that is already on the inside of them. Why am I saying this? Because it's possible that the Holy Ghost is in you and you're not seeing any of this gift manifested. What you need is a fresh baptism of the Spirit. Now, what, is, what exactly is that fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit? It's about the Holy Spirit empowering you and you yielding yourself to the ministry of the Holy Spirit so that these gifts can be manifested. Now see the results of this baptism. Verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with tongues as what? As what? As the Spirit gave them what? Utterance. So you realize that every time there was a fresh infilling of the Holy Ghost, there was a manifestation. We saw that in the life of Paul. When Paul laid hands on them, they began to speak in tongues. So people have issues about tongues. Maybe we'll spend time to talk about it. But the truth of the matter is that if you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit saturating you, he will give you utterance. He will give you utterance. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, uh, what does the, the Holy Spirit comes, comes or lives in us when we get born again? I want to show you something in John 14 verse 16. And I'll show you two things the Holy Spirit does for us and then we'll, we'll move on. Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay. So, the Holy Spirit, you know, in John 14, 16, I, I want to show you the, this now. John 14, 16. Go to John 14, 16. I just want you to be very convinced that the Holy Ghost is in you and the gifts are there. And I will pray the Father... And he will give you another, another helper that he may abide with you for how long? For how long? Okay. Because <laughs> I know I, I got into problems when I told, told people that he should not invite the Holy Spirit. The word here <laughs> is Alos. It will be, it will abide with you forever. The key word here is abide. What does abide mean? To live in you, to dwell, to stay, to reside. Now, this is the key word I want you to note. Another. The word is alos. The Greek word is alos. The word alos means another of the very same kind. That's important. Now, this is where sometimes people get their doctrine of Trinity messed up. <laughs> you know, we say God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three gods in one. You know, we, we all say that from, 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 um, 
from like the hymns we grew up with. And then you even hear some people pray, especially when they want to dedicate a building. I, or they want to, I dedicate this in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Now, sometimes it's, a, it's confusing. Three gods in one, one God in three, what exactly it is. It's very simple. The scripture says, Here, O Israel, the Lord your God is but one God. It's one God in three different manifestations. God manifested to the Jews as God the Father in, 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 in the Old Testament. Coming out of the wilderness into the area of Jesus, he manifested as God the Son, Jesus. And in our day and in our age, he's manifesting as God the Holy Spirit. It's like, for instance, I'm Maxwell, I'm one man, but to my wife, I'm her husband. To my son, I'm his father. Right? To you, <laughs> who am I now? <laughs> you say, you are a boy. No, I'm your pastor. Now, does that make me three? No, I'm not, I'm not three. I'm one, but I have different what? Manifestations or what? Or expressions. Now, this is important. Because he says, I'm going to send you another. Now, when he says another, Jesus wasn't saying, I'm going to send you something else. The word another in the Greek is alos. It's, it's, <laughs> it's another of the very same kind. Meaning that actually there is no difference between Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Selah. Think deeply. Now, this is, what I'm, this is what I'm driving at. The Jesus have all the gifts of the Spirit working through him. Yes or no? Yes. Uh, if you say no, you should just go, go home. Yes, Jesus had, right? Come on now, come on. Yes. Jesus had it, right? Yes. Now, if Jesus said, I'm going to send you another of the same kind that will abide with you forever... If the gifts of the Spirit are not with that another of the same kind, does it really make sense? No. It means that the same gift that were functioning in Jesus are going to be locked up in the Holy Spirit. And by the time the Holy Spirit comes in us, he's going to bring everything that Jesus brought, that Jesus had. Okay? <laughs> Do you get it? So, it's not like you're going to get the gifts. They are already in you. When you receive the Holy Spirit, it came with him. Now, I'll show you something. Go to Galatians chapter 5. Now, we're going to do something here. Now, this is what I, I wanted to do with this board. Uh, this is a big H, right? To signify the Holy Spirit, right? So, let's take this leg here as the gifts, then let's take this leg here as the fruits. Now this is the big H, the big Holy Ghost. All right. Okay. Now, when you, when you got born again, what happened? You see, without you receiving the Holy Spirit, because this is where, now I want you to please just pay attention, right? This is where a lot of maybe the orthodox and the charismatic people different. When you go to some orthodox church and they don't pray loud in tongues, this is their, this is their basis. That Listen, you don't need to pray in tongues to show that you are filled with the Holy Ghost. Are they correct? Yes, they are. But, you know, praying in tongues is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. It's an expression. It's giving the Holy Spirit what? An expression. So it doesn't mean that the 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 guy out there who doesn't pray in tongues does not have the Holy Spirit. I, I want you to really understand it because some of, I know some of you don't, don't speak in tongues, but you are full of the Holy Ghost. Now, the point is, why do you speak in tongues? It is an expression. It's a prayer language. And then the truth of the matter is that sometimes that visible charismatic expression of the gift of the Holy Spirit emboldens you to manifest the gifts. Pastor Maxwell's messages are available in over a dozen books and a thousand audio and video formats.
purchase this title and other titles by Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, please call plus 234-805-888-7575. We know you've been blessed by this telecast. To become a partner, please call plus 234-805-888-7575. The Maxwell's messages are available in over a dozen books and a thousand audio and video format. To purchase this title and other titles by Pastor Maxwell Ogaga, please call plus 234-805-888-7575 or send us an email, office at pastormax.ng. Also available are free downloads from www.thepastormax.ng. God bless you.